Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. QRP is fun, the FT818 is a great little radio. I am loving, huh, I showed you the rear side, sorry. The FT818 is a great little radio. I am loving playing with this thing and exploring all things FT818 related. And one of the things that I have been exploring is trying to contact local repeaters. It ain't cutting it. I can only get to three of the local repeaters and that's because they are extremely local. They are very close and that's kind of cheating, isn't it? Uh, so what are we gonna do about it? How about we strap some more power to the thing and put out all the watts? Let's get to it. Okay, folks, we all know the FT818 has four different power level settings. And when you're on external power or internal power, some of those settings don't change too much, but we're gonna go through and check this out real quick. I'm gonna go to a repeater that I know I can't hit right now. This is Menominee, Wisconsin, which is really far away. I'm not gonna expect to hit it, but I'm gonna ID and I'm gonna show you some power levels just so we know what we're working with. And then we'll get to the task at hand. So right now there is no indicator on the display. That's gonna be really hard to see down there because it's not there, but we're on the highest power setting possible. Kilo Mike 9 Golf testing and it shows 3.21 on the highest power setting. So we'll go down to the next highest power setting. And now you can see an L with three bars on it. Kilo Mike 9 Golf testing. And that comes out to three watts. And now we'll hit the power button again and it changes to an L with two bars. Kilo Mike 9 Golf testing, 1.54 watts. And then we'll hit the power button again. This first repeater is in North Branch, Minnesota, and we are gonna go down. We're at the lowest power level. Can we open it? No. I'm changing my meter to be the power meter. Three bars of power there. All right, so an L with two bars. Can't open it. An L with three bars. Can't open it. Full power. Can't open it. Okay, so that is a bust. I'm gonna mark that on my sheet and I'm gonna go through and mark all of these on the sheet and then we will show you when we can open them and, and what power we can open them. Okay, so out of our entire list of repeaters, we were able to get three total that are in our area. So what are we gonna do with this? Let's plug in an amp and see what happens. The BTEC amplifier, this is the Amp V25D. So this will work with VHF only, and it will also work with TDMA and DMR. So if you have one of those radios, it will do it. It says output power 25 to 30 watts. We're gonna put that to the test here pretty soon. But in order to connect this to your radio, it's really straightforward. This port right here is for connecting to the radio. This port is for connecting to your antenna. This plug is for connecting to power. And then you turn it on and that's it. Everything else is handled via RF sense. So when your radio sends a signal in, the amp turns on and more power comes out. We are rearranged and we have the tower of power again. This is the FT818. This is the tuner that we use for HF, which is plugged into the rear data port. So it's just kind of there because I don't feel like taking it out of the way. We have the BTEC RF radio amplifier, and then we have our MFJ 849 power meter again. So let's go through our power settings. If you recall, L with one line is 0 0.38 watts without the amplifier. What are we at now? 41.54, holy moly. Let's go up to the next power level, which is an L with two bars, 45.58. It did peak a little bit higher than that, but we'll take 45.58. An L with three bars, didn't get any better, 45.5. And then let's go to full power, 
45.5 also. I saw 45.6 in there, maybe a 40, maybe a little bit higher, I don't know. But we'll put down 45.6. So there are our power levels, and I don't see much point in trying anything above power L2. So we'll leave it at power L2, and we'll run back through our list of repeaters. All right, this is the North Branch repeater. Yes! So we got into that one. Let's do the Rush City repeater. Yes! Go to Isanti. Yes! This is awesome. Duxbury. No Duxbury. Okay. All right, on to the Wisconsin repeaters. Balsam we could already get. We can still get it, obviously, with more power. Siren we could already get. Baronet we could already get. Baron. Yes. That was very polite. Glenwood City. Nothing. Baldwin. Yes. Lampson. Oh, scratchy, but it's there. All right, this is pretty cool. So we went down and we were not able to get any of the Minnesota repeaters at full power without the amplifier. So what was full power without the amplifier? 3.21 watts could not get the job done. It could not make the trip. In Wisconsin, we were able to get three repeaters. These ones here are actually fairly close. This one is probably 10 miles away. And then none of the other ones were able to be reached at all. Then with the amplifier, we picked up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 repeaters that we could not reach without the amplifier. Fantastic. I wasn't expecting that. One of the repeaters that we opened up, the Lampson, the Lampson Wisconsin repeater, which I had never heard of before trying this experiment out, couldn't hear us. We couldn't hear it on QRP, on QRO. It could hear us good enough to open up the repeater, but we couldn't hear it good enough to maintain a conversation. So we're actually doing better than that. This is the, the BTEC V25D amplifier, the Amp-V25D. There will be a link in the description down below where you can grab one of these and my thoughts on this are this would be great to stick in the car, bury it under the seat, and do some mobile APRS work and do some mobile repeater work. And then when you get to your destination, pull the 818 out of the car and go do some QRP stuff, go mountain climbing, go whatever it is you're going to do. Or this would be great for desk bound shack work with a QRP radio. This works with any VHF. They do have UHF models, but this is the VHF one. There are many like it, but this one is mine. VHF and TDMA and DMR also. So they do have one that does VHF only, but this one does VHF and DMR as well. We'll have to test that out as soon as we find some long distance DMR that we can't do right now. I don't have that yet, we're working on it. This has been a fantastic way to get this little tiny, it's kind of big with the tuner on it, but it's still a tiny radio. This thing is very tiny when you take away all of its protective gear and its tuning accessories and so forth. It helped it punch above its weight class. So. I'm digging it and I'm going to go work some more repeaters in the area and see what more we can do with it. To give you a good idea of what these things look like, this is all of the repeaters in the area that I tried to reach out to. All these little blue, I mean, what, do, what do we call these things? This, this thing didn't exist before Google Maps made this thing. All these little blue dots on the map and then the black house is my house. Then this is a map of all the repeaters that I could hit on just QRP power, which, you know, three repeaters isn't bad, but you can see how close they are compared to the blue ones that I still can't reach. And then when I plugged in the amp, all of them can be heard. There were more repeaters that I used in the test, but this this should get you, get you handy. So all the repeaters, QRP repeaters, QRO repeaters. 
what a big difference. Thanks for being awesome.